Welcome to the Kansas City Stockyards, where we're celebrating America's first and 150 years of the American Shorthorn Association. I'm your host, Bob Cervera. This area is known for great beef, and that heritage began right here in the once bustling stockyards. The rise of the stockyards in 19th century America marked the first time in history that food was produced for the masses. It allowed people to leave farms for opportunities in cities like Chicago, Denver, and New York City. And America's first, the shorthorn breed, was critical to that transition. It changed everything. In many ways, the shorthorn story is America's story. Let's go back to the year 1783. That's when the Revolutionary War ended and the first shorthorn cattle were imported to our shores. Of course, shorthorns originated in England. Around the year 1600, the breed developed in the Tees River Valley. The cattle were multi-purpose, providing milk, meat, and draft for farming. When they came to America, Shorthorns were ideal for westward expansion. With pastures aplenty, farmers imported shorthorns from Great Britain. They were bred to longhorns and shazam! The quality of beef improved overnight. To preserve pedigrees, the first shorthorn herd book was established in England in 1822 called the Coates Herd Book. In 1846, the first American shorthorn herd book was published. Then, in 1872, Cattle raisers gathered in Indianapolis and formed the American Shorthorn Association, creating the nation's first beef breed association. Today, the association is headquartered in Kansas City, and shorthorn cattle still produce some of the best beef in the business. Through it all, shorthorns have been known for their gentle nature. Their docility makes them a family-friendly breed, ideal for building a better future for families, communities, and country. This world's all about what are you gonna be known for when you're gone. We're all gonna be here only so long. And my whole thing in the cattle business is trying to improve the shorthorn breed. Steve and I met in 1999 and joined forces right then and, and I knew that um, shorthorns were going to be a part of my life. You know, when I first realized shorthorn truly was America's first on the North American continent, then it was the first breed association formed in 1872, that says a lot. You know, really, when you think about it, longhorn cattle were the only thing that we ever had in the United States. When they brought these shorthorn cattle in, they were the improvers. They were the ones that were, that were gonna cross with the longhorns and make these cattle that are gonna be thicker, have more meat in them, and, and, be, and be cattle that are gonna milk and have a lot of attributes. And that's why when you think about shorthorns in the 40s and 50s and 60s, they were the dominant breed. And when you think of 150 years of being in shorthorn cattle, you think about all these people that were in the shorthorn breed, Massey Ferguson, all these names like the r, r Railroad and all these big corporations that had shorn cattle, that's really something. The history of the breed is so important because you really can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. It's phenomenal to me that so much was written about this breed of cattle and it's still there for us to know and so much of the information is, is totally relevant. But those old records, the pedigree connects one generation from now to, to the next, to the next, to the next, all the way back to those first cattle that came over here and literally transformed a country. You know, they couldn't have built America without livestock. And these livestock came and, and they did a job and 150 years later, they're still here doing it for us. It has a future because of its illustrious past. 
I, I really think the, the reason why they've survived as long as they have is because us as breeders have nurtured the breed. We've selected the good cattle to continue the process of breeding good shorthorn cattle. You know, the cattle business is all about the people. And honestly, my granddaughters mean the world to me. And having them go to the first junior nationals this year, I was such a proud papa. Everything we do here at Little Cedar Cattle Company is, is for them. I've certainly learned a lot about shorthorns and I've learned a lot about shorthorn people. The people are as resilient and as uh, committed as, um, as we are and, and that's what's made this breed great. I just really love shorthorn cattle. You're still gonna see a roan somewhere. Way after all of us, there's still gonna be a shorthorn cow in the pastures. Improve maternal heterosis with genetics from Jungle Shorthorn Farms. Over 300 heads selling annually across the country prove shorthorns excel in a real world setting. A couple dates to remember, November 5th, Durham Nation, an outstanding set of bred females, heifer calves, and age advantage bulls sell. And then again on February 4th, 2023, 100 pap test guaranteed shorthorn and shorthorn plus bulls sell, all delivered free of charge in the continental U.S. and Canada. Visit jungleshorthornfarms.com today. Shorthorn, the breed that defines the beginning of the American cattle industry. In honor of 150 years, the ASA proudly announces Shorthorn and the American cattle industry, a commemorative book of the breed's heritage and influence. Special acknowledgments go to authors Dr. Bob Hogue and Dr. Burt Moore. Visit shorthorn.org to order your copy. One of the many storied operations in Shorthorn and the American cattle industry is Leveldale Farms. This operation is celebrating 170 years. Leveldale Farms started in 1852 with my grandfather's grandfather moving out from Ohio. People sometimes ask me, is that a family name? And I say, no, it depicts the original farm ground, which was level or flat. That's where they started farming and raising livestock. Both my grandfather and my father were very active in the Shorthorn Association. They were both selected builders of the breed. They were both presidents. They just lived it. My grandfather's brother and my grandfather really developed the promotion of the shorthorns and started exhibiting them in the 1920s. They exhibited over eight months of a year. and That was the promotion in that period of time, how people got to know your herd, to go out and see it. My grandfather really started developing the shorthorn breed in a big way and was the first invited to Perth, Scotland, to judge the Big Shorthorn Show in the 1940s. And they imported a great deal of cattle from Scotland into the United States. My father, from his activities facilitating the development further of an ag school in England, got to be well known by many families that had been active in shorthorn breed in Scotland and Northern England when it was really started. In fact, about 10 years ago when I was over there, with my girls at the World Shorthorn Conference, met some of these same family descendants immediately running into their house and bring out letters that their father and grandfather had exchanged with mine because they knew each other and uh, trusted one another in their integrity in, in raising cattle. My mother helped develop the Lassies. It was a women's oriented program and got women more involved with the cattle business and uh, later were able to get scholarships and help uh, with further education and things too over time. The shorthorn breed and the people they got to know across the United States and other parts of the world kept enhancing their lives. They offered many qualities. They liked functional cattle that required very low maintenance. They had good disposition. As a farmer or rancher, you didn't tend to get injured dealing with them, and they produced whatever you needed. Going forward, the shorthorn breed, I really think that with the data we're gathering today and the more emphasis that more breeders have, I think it can re-escalate into a leading breed, both from a a standpoint of crossbreeding, but also as an independent breed in the future.
you're in the beef business. We are too. At Paint Valley Farms, we're building beef bowls packed with power, performance, traits that pay, like calving ease, high growth, carcass quality, and maternal ability. We raise cattle for cattlemen. Paint Valley Farms. Shorthorn Beef Bulls. Join us for an upcoming auction or visit us online anytime at paintvalleyfarms.com. The Kansas City Stockyards opened for business in 1871 and closed in 1991. At one time, hundreds of thousands of cattle arrived here on trains from ranches out west to sustain a growing population. Though the stockyards dissolved, the shorthorn breed has persisted, and carrying on the shorthorn legacy are dedicated families like the Lehmans and the Jordans. So the American Shorthorn Association has been very important to our family for many generations. Um, my father-in-law was builder of the breed, my husband was builder of the breed, my mother-in-law was Lassie of the Year. Um, it's just something that we have lived and breathed for many, many years and I'm proud to have the opportunity to be a part of an organization like that that supports its members. So Scott, my husband's um, ancestors came here in the late 1800s and there have been now six generations of Lehmans here on this farm, um, my grandkids being the sixth. They had their first registered shorthorn in 1901 and there have been shorthorns in these permanent pastures ever since 1901. My maiden name is Jordan and so I am a cousin to the Wakaroo Jordans, to Barry and my Uncle Carl, and um, they kind of got us started in the shorthorn breed um, as far as my siblings and I, but there's a, there's a history that my parents have as well. My dad showed shorthorns. There's a, a photo behind me of him in 1955 when he won the Indiana State Fair with a shorthorn steer, and there's also a photo back there of my grandfather with some shorthorns. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of history. Um, Scott and I met because we were both out on the road showing shorthorns. We served on the Junior National Board together, um, and our kids just kind of never had a choice. They were growing up in the barn, and, and they've shown all over as well. They've grown up going to the shows and, and being in the barn and working with us on a daily basis. You know, they've learned from a very young age the work the responsibility that comes with it, as well as the reward and just, you know, the pride of walking out through the pasture and seeing what you've done. And um, so they have shown, um, actually Cody's first junior national, he was four years old before they had an age limit. And so he showed at four years old and, and all three of them have showed their whole lives. I think the, the animal that really put the Lehmans um, on the maps so to say, with the shorthorns was in 1917, and that was a bull that they purchased called Ceremonious Sultan. Um, he was a five-time international grand champion and like a 44-time state fair champion. Shorthorns are competitive in all areas, and I think that's the thing that's so unique about shorthorns, that we can be a show breed, we can be a market breed. Um, it's what your focus is. I think that's what has kept shorthorns going strong all these years. I just think that it's something we should be really proud of, that we have stood the test of time, that we're still here. We served the purpose years ago, generations ago, and we're still serving the purpose for cattlemen today. My family has been involved in different aspects of the Shore Association for our whole history. When my dad and grandfather took over Walkeroo, the cow herd was an important part to get through the depression in the, in the 30s. We utilized cows as a way to generate some sort of sellable product off of lands that couldn't be um, row cropped. You know, the cow was used to generate something out of a lower resource that the farm owned. It was natural to utilize shorthorns at that time but the shorthorn thing just continued. Over the years, we had added other breeds, Hereford cows, Angus cows, but really the shorthorns did the most things right. 
and they were able to make use of the refuges that we had available here. So Shorthorns really rose to the top just through trial and error. Shorthorn Association, at that time in history, allowed the appendix cattle to become registered in the regular herd book at 15 16 That gave us the ability to, to be transparent in everything that was happening at that time. And that, of course, was right as a lot of cattle type was changing and a lot of emphasis on performance was beginning. So then we started publishing a sire summary and the early data was collected from people that had records. That was turned into the association and then eventually became a sire summary and, and now today's current EPD program. The evolution of those things allowed the shorthorn breed to be relevant to the beef industry. You know, it's been said that the shorthorn breed uh, pulled the wagon west across the United States and then they were used to provide milk and cheese and butter and now beef. To have an animal that could do all three of those things is pretty unique, but it's also pretty unique what we're able to do in, the, in today's market as well. You know, it makes you feel proud to be part of something that's been around and stood the test of time. But to also to tie into celebrating 150 anniversary of the American Shorehorn Association, it's just hard to wrap your mind around how a group of people have, have stayed together, uh, making progress and, and challenging each other to make better cattle and, and make them fit into a, a ever-changing beef industry. You know, the next few years, and foreseeable future, there's going to be more change. We're going to have to step up our game and we're, we're ready to and, and to celebrate what we've done in the past is going to help challenge us for the future. Exciting, contemporary, short horns. Join Peak View Ranch in Colorado on March 4th. Write this down, March 4th, 2023, for our annual bull sale. Offering includes shorthorn and shorthorn red Angus and shorthorn Semmental composite bulls, bred right for the commercial cattleman. And we have top show prospects and elite herd sire prospects from some of the breed's top donors, available private treaty throughout the year. Visit peakviewranch.com. Undoubtedly, this breed has stood the test of time because of a shared vision to pass along a love for shorthorns in future generations. In 2022, shorthorn steers were featured in the National Western Stock Show's Catch a Calf program. Through this competition and other junior livestock shows, young stockmen not only learn about practical beef management, but also the versatility and strengths the shorthorn breed has to offer. My name is Rick Leone, I am from Fowler, Colorado, and we are excited to have been the provider for the National Western Stock Show Catch a Calf program for 2022. The 150th anniversary of the American Shorthorn Association is a very exciting thing. Shorthorn cattle, they're kind of the beginning of cattle in America. They're integral in many of the different breeds that exist today, and we're celebrating that this year. So we are here today to really celebrate the youth that have entered this program. They received these calves in May. They have fed and cared for them and they're here today to present them. They're competing both for their ability to have prepared these animals and fed them, but also their ability to exhibit them today. So it's really a great celebration of a very work ethic, family oriented program that really celebrates the youth of not only Colorado, but Nebraska and other adjacent states as well. I got involved with the Catch Calf program as a chance to come out to Denver to show. Going through the program two years in a row, I have learned um, how to do the monthly progress report, how to figure average daily gain, feed conversions, and all that stuff. And it actually helps a lot when we get to the feedlot because now I can help my dad more. I've always been told it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I have built so many connections through this program. If you're starting out, this will be your very first calf, go for it. If you're ending out your year, just like I am, go for it. Everyone will learn something from this program. They have such an advantage in terms of docility and gain and yield grade and such a rich tradition of family involvement. 
Right now, the number of kids showing shorthorn cattle just continues to grow every year, and shorthorn cattle are just exploding. The future of the shorthorn breed is bright. It is gaining rapidly in popularity, and so it's a very exciting time to watch the breeders being able to benefit from that popularity and just how much promise and excitement, how large the shows are becoming, and also the commercial acceptance of shorthorns and what that has meant for the breed. So it's really an exciting time for all those involved with the shorthorn breed. The National Junior Shorthorn Show and Youth Conference is one of the industry's best junior events. With over 700 head exhibited and 16 skills-based contests, more than 2,000 awards are presented to 450 exhibitors. $17,000 in scholarships are made possible by generous supporters. Best of the Barnes voters named the event the most enjoyable junior national and ASA's Shelby Dean the best junior activities director. Enter by May 1st at juniorshorthorn.org. Today, we shared the story of the shorthorn breed and America. And when you think about it, there's no form of food production more sustainable than ours. And few breeds are as sustainable as shorthorns and the people who raise them. I love the cattle business because it's just a way of life. I've grown up in it. Uh, I get up in the morning. I'm anxious to get out with the cows. I check all the, the cows the first thing. Uh, it's one of my responsibilities, and Josh feeds the show cattle. Very few fathers have the opportunity to work with their son on a daily to daily basis, and we get along great together. Once in a while, we'll just disagree on who we're going to flush a cow to or something like that. but. Uh, it's fun, same way with Colton. We try to get him involved in some of the decision making and, and the breeding and have him relate to that. It's, it's a true love, it's, it's just uh, like none other. It is pretty awesome. I get to work with my dad everyday basis all day. I can survive without him. He's taught me everything and taught my son everything as well. And same with uh, my grandpa. We do everyday chores from going to shows, bailing hay, everything. It's sort of a way of life. It's not, it's really not a job to me. And even to Josh, he eat, lives, and drinks shorthorn cattle. And Colton's on that same trend. And uh, we get excited when we see a newborn calf and how that's going to uh, transition into a, a show heifer down the road or even a potential donor cow. I've been showing since I was three and raising cattle and they've got me into showing them. They've always just take me to shows and I just enjoy it. It's just a great opportunity to meet people and to make friends, like lifelong friends. Um, he always looks forward to it every year. There's always something going on. You learn so much. Uh, it's really great. You can get the kids involved and they can get run for the board and they can be on the board and help all the other juniors out. The kids feed off of, uh, they learn by, you know, something, they do something right, they'll learn and do it right the next time out. Uh, some of the kids get disappointed that they didn't do good in the show or the, won the contest, but they'll come back next year and better prepared and, and uh, higher expectations. And it's, it's, it's a game of life when you really get down to it. Showing cattle, we work our cattle twice, three times a day, just washing them getting their hair popping, then try to make more hair, eating them. I think that it's, it teaches them a lot of responsibility. Um, you get to meet a lot of people. There's always somebody to look up to. And the Shorthorn, the American Junior Shorthorn Association offers a broad variety of things to, to help these kids. So you never know the connections you're gonna make, you know, doing these sorts of things and who you might meet that's gonna inspire you. What I love and cherish about uh, Shorthorns is, is the generations, the legacy that we've been involved with and the, the passion from our whole family, you know, aunts and uncles all the way down to grandkids. And I've always enjoyed history and uh, I've read into a lot of the history of the Shorthorn breed and obviously our family has been involved with it for a lot of those years, you know, 100 years of registering purebred Shorthorns and ourselves. And, 
it's neat that even 50 years before that, this breed was, you know, thriving in the United States. And I, I think that's really a neat thing to be a part of. One of the big reasons that Shorthorns have been around so long and been able to you know, be here and celebrate our 150th anniversary is just the strength of the breed and the people that are involved in our breed. You know, the cattle are so easy to handle. And I think all that makes a big difference. But I think that's had a lot to do with people buying Shorthorns. We're kind of finding with the Shorthorns, they really complement a lot of the commercial cows. Guys are using them to go into that three breed rotation. We find that Shorthorns do really well for us on the maternal side, but when they hit the rail or hit the plate, it's a great eating experience. My dad liked them because when we got started, they were so gentle, and he had always used a shorthorn bull. That's what he told my brother and I. He says, boys, they're gentle, they're easy to handle. Back when I was a child, it was all shorthorns. And I think some of that in those generations is coming back. Some of them older generations are passing on that they were raised with shorthorns, and, and I think some of these breeds need that cross. They needed more docile cattle and feed efficiency cattle because they can compete with any of those breeds. And Malky and Billy, they're awesome. And, and of course, the disposition. I think, you know, in the future, hopefully more people are going to see the value of shorthorns and adding those genetics to their operation because I feel that we have all the traits that are needed. And so I really think the last few years with some of the research and the projects that the association has been doing, that we've positioned ourselves in a good place for the future. Well, being 150 years for the shorthorn breed means a lot to a lot of people. I think we're on a rise and I see it just keep going up as we look to the future. America's first, a family-friendly, gentle, sustainable, and high-quality beef breed. Few things can stand the test of 150 years, but shorthorns have. So cows and calves, lads and lassies, happy anniversary. We hope you enjoyed this tale of America's First. I'm Bob Cervera. Thanks for watching.